Hey folks, this is Chad Perkins for Red Giant. Welcome to part two of our look at Trap Code Down. Now, if you missed part one, I highly recommend checking that out first, or you might be a little confused and sad with what we're doing here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the Tao geometry and paths that we created in the last tutorial. We're going to build on that by deforming them. We're going to offset, repeat, displace, going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to start here with this example, which is kind of like this beautiful volumetric tapered 3D stroke. And I'm going to go to the path generator section. In the last tutorial, we talked about how you could adjust start and end path to kind of create it. This look like it's drawing on. It's beautiful, it's elegant, but it doesn't quite give us the same uh, results because we have to animate start path and end path at the same time. So it looks like it's kind of coming on screen and going off. There's a better way to do it. And it's in the offset category using the offset parameter. By default, this is set to offset size, which actually just offsets the size of the path around the path. And we use the offset value to control that. Now this is actually pretty powerful because this one offset value controls any of these attributes that you would like to offset. It also controls this very robust offset animation sequence, which is a really cool set of properties that I really recommend checking out in the DAO help. Now I'll close that up for now. And as I increase offset, we take this past 100 and then our object disappears. So what we can do is check loop offset and then this does a seamless loop. It just keeps going around in circles. Now in this case, this isn't what I want. I'm gonna actually uncheck loop offset, uncheck offset size, and actually I'm gonna offset position so that we move the position of the geometry around the path. And as I take this to zero and increase this, now we have this geometry that just spins and spins and spins and spins all the way around our path for days. And it looks spectacular. So a lot of times the default offset size will get you where you need to go. Sometimes it might help to loop the offset and also offset position is another option. Just be aware that you shouldn't be using offset size and offset position at the same time in most cases. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is right below the offset group, there's the repeat paths group, which allows you to create duplicates of your objects. So we can increase this and we have some duplicates. This does get a little bit complex. So let's take a really basic example just so we understand what's going on. So in repeat paths, I'm gonna open up the first repeater. Notice there's a first repeater and a second repeater. As we're about to learn here, the first repeater makes copies and then the second repeater takes everything that the first repeater did and then copies that. So I'm gonna add, let's say five repetitions to the first repeater. Now, all of the transformations, these are all just basically ways to transform the duplicates. All these transformations will be transferred to the duplicate. So right now I don't have any duplications on any transformation. So as I increase the world position X, it's going to offset these or move them along the X axis. Now there's some powerful forces at work here, people. There's some crazy things going on. There's world space and then segment space. For more details, consult the DAO help documentation, but essentially we have world space, which is normal X, Y, Z, X left to right, Y up and down, Z towards you and away from you. But then we also have the coordinate space for the individual segments. So we have the segments X, the segments Y and so forth. So if we adjust the segment X, then the X axis for each of these segments is increased uh, for each duplication, each repetition. So again, if I back up here, as we adjust the world position X, these all go on the uh, world position X, they move along the X axis as expected. As I change the segment position X, then the segments move along their own X axis, which creates entirely different results, making this a very powerful tool. Now, I don't want any segment transformations right now. I just want some stars along the x-axis and there we go now i'm going to close up the first repeater and go into the second repeater and again the second repeater is going to take everything that we came into it with with this the star here and all of the repetitions from the first repeater and it's going to duplicate that so now if i add maybe like i don't know five repetitions of the second repeater and then adjust the position the world position y now we could have this cool grid and again, this is our original line. And because it's making five repetitions, we see each of these five lines is one repetition from the second repeater. 
Now using these repeaters, you could do a lot of awesome stuff. I'm gonna go to the next comp here. And let me show you another cool thing you could do. And again, we'll look at some examples in just a second here. But I have here this oh, dinky ring of stuff. It's nothing impressive, but we were going to make it impressive. We're also going to add some color to this. So I have here my first repeater and I'm going to do some segment transformations. Now we could just do some of these transformations in the segment menu, but uh, I'm going to do it here just for, because we're in this section. Now I'm going to make one repetition here and by default, it makes an extra duplicate. So we need to go in and turn off symmetric doubler. That's that extra duplicate there. Oops. I'm in, there we go. Make sure to turn that off. And by default, it offsets along the uh, the x-axis like we did in the last e example, but we don't want to do that here. So I'm going to turn this to zero. Now we could adjust the segment x, segment y, segment z. And actually kind of change the look of this. Again, a lot of this stuff you could do in the segment menu, but we're going to do that here. And actually, I'm going to take this to 600, 500, 700 to get a really nice, cool shape here. Now I'm going to close up first repeater, go into second repeater, and make a bunch of copies of this. Again, I'll turn off the symmetric doubler here. And let's say I'll make five repetitions. And by default, it offsets things on the y-axis. Let's take world position y to zero. Now I take seven, segment position x to 70. What that's going to do is it's going to make every copy go 70 beyond the last one, which creates this awesome spiral effect. Let's add a little bit uh, to the y and maybe just a little bit to Z as well, or maybe not, that actually looks pretty good there. But there we have it, this really beautiful shape that was quick and easy to make. The only thing is it's just not super pretty, you know, it's just like this white yuckiness. So what we can do is actually change the color using the repeater. So there's a, a certain color system built into only the repeater, which is one of the biggest reasons to use the repeater, in my opinion, this repeater color layer. So I have this other layer in my comp here, and this is the layer that we're going to use as the texture for the repeater color layer. Now in the next tutorial, we're going to talk about textures. This is not a texture. This is a repeater color layer, which is its own thing. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to use the X axis to color the first repeater. So it's going to get this green color. Then it's going to use the Y axis, this whole spectrum to color everything for the second repeater. And the results are going to be beautiful and awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and turn back on the visibility of Tau, turn off the visibility of our texture layer. I'm going to change the repeater color layer to black, red noise, blah, 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 this thing. And then we have this beautiful end result. Again, we have our first instance, which gets our color from the X axis of that map, the repeater color layer. And then the Y axis gives it this gradient on the other colors. And we have just this beautiful, colorful masterpiece. Again, this is not a texture. It's going to look for a single color to apply to each repetition, one flat solid color, but you can create some beautiful results with that. Let's look at another couple examples of what you could do with the repeater. Here's like this cool yoga thing. Let's preview this. So this has a lot going on, a lot of shapes, lots of color, all kinds of cool things. We'll look a little bit more at this in the next tutorial, but a lot going on here. But really, this is just one instance of DAO. If I move ahead in time here, go to DAO, open up the repeat pass option, we could see the repeater here. I'll turn off the second repeater so we could see the original. That's all it is. Go up to the first repeater. We can actually turn off the original repeater. So that's the original shape that we started with. Nothing much there. But then we add the first repeater, duplicate it, we get that. Then we add the second repeater, which adds the duplicates in a completely different direction. And we have a pretty complex object. Now I also have this uh, tunnel example here. Let's preview this. So that's a good time. But in actuality, it's just a simple fractal repeated. If I turn off this camera and turn on an alternative camera that I've set up, you see it's just a regular little, little fractal squiggle, kind of we've been making a bunch of times here in Dow in these tutorials. And it's just repeated in Z-Space a bunch of times. Put a camera, fly through it, bada bing, sci-fi tunnel. Now this one final example here, uh, this is less visually impressive, I suppose, but I was kind of fiddling around with the repeaters and what you could do with them with segment space and randomization. And so this is just one instance of DAO. And with the first repeater, I made these uh, the little orange center here and shrink down. I use the repeater color layer that just has yellow and orange on it. And with the second repeater, I just duplicated that flower, but added a lot of randomness. So you can create really diverse and varying landscapes by playing around with these two repeaters.
Now, let's talk about fractal displacement. This is super fun. So I have my Dow layer here. And essentially what this is, is this is just, you know, a regular simple line going from left to right here with the repeat sphere segment mode. And you can actually see kind of you have that in mind. You can see these kind of squashed spheres that have been rotated and twisted a little bit. And that's all that's going on there. And what we can do is add some fractal displacement. The fractal displacement group, go to amplitude, which is the amount, the intensity of the fractal displacement, increase that, and then, bam, beautiful. I love when you have these low poly faceted uh, looks to your geometry and then you displace them. You just kind of can't go wrong. No matter what your settings are, it just feels like they're always just gorgeous. Now we can adjust the frequency here, which adjusts the fine details of the fractal displacement. So as we take this high, we'll have very fine details on fractal displacement, kind of hard to see with all this amplitude. But as we turn this down to a very low number, we kind of create this like undulating look to our displacement. Look at that. And that's an entirely different look. I'm gonna go back up to this cool rock and roll spikes thing going on here. And we can animate these with four different properties. Well, we can animate all these values actually, but probably most common to animate them with these four values. We could adjust the evolution, which kind of evolves the fractal. We could also adjust the offset X or Y or Z ind independently if we wanted to make it look like wind was acting on these forces or maybe gravity or something like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and zero out offset and I'll zero out evolution. And one of the cool things about this is that you could easily create a seamless looping animation with this. So I'm gonna to animate uh, evolution. I'm just gonna click a stopwatch for evolution and I'm gonna click end here to go to the end of my comp. And I'm gonna set a really high value. Um, I don't know, let's say 541. I don't know. It doesn't have to be any kind of specific number. You don't have to do any kind of math or anything. And then you just have to open up seamless loop. And I'm at the end frame here of my animation. And I just have to click the set end frame button. And that creates an almost seamless loop. And I say it's almost because what happens is, is that the first frame of the animation, that's where I am right now, and the end frame of the animation, where I am right now, are exactly the same. So you will have a one frame hiccup there. So what I can do is press U to reveal all my keyframes and then move this final keyframe one frame beyond the edge of the composition. And then I have a seamless loop. Let's check it out. It's looping, coming to the end, the moment of truth, and boom, didn't even see it. So it's just that easy to set up a seamlessly looping fractal inside of DAO. Ah, it's just incredible, incredible. Now, one last little trick here. This technically isn't like fractal displacement, but I, in my head, it's in the same category. Um, and when we have a path generator here, a lot of times you have this option to gridify. Now, what gridify means is it's going to constrain everything to fit into X, Y, and Z. Like right now, everything's all loosey-goosey with this fractal pattern. It's just kind of drawing everywhere. So the steel pipes kind of look surreal. So what we can do is actually increase gridify, wait for it, and things begin to gridify. It looks like a grid. I'll take this to 60. And then as I preview this, we can see like a grid. Yeah, see? Very nice. You have been gridified. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. Three ways to create more interesting results by fiddling with DAO paths and geometry. In our next tutorial, we'll add the finishing touches. as We look at materials, lighting, and texturing, all the stuff that we've been doing in DAO. It's going to be a blast, and we hope you'll check it out. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial, everybody. On behalf of Red Giant, I'm Chad Perkins. Take care.